going on, YouTube fam? This your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. Make sure y'all keep up with me. It's a lot of information in this situation. For all the day one fam, thanks for tuning back into another episode. Y'all already know it's all love. I hope y'all had a happy holidays. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Let's get right into the story. Street justice, retaliation, get back, whatever you want to call it, is when someone decides to take matters into their own hands and take a life or multiple to either send a message or to get even if they feel played. Some people go all out when they feel like a line has been crossed or people they feel should be loyal break that bond. But in certain cities all over America, you might have whole families or generations that rule with an iron fist and everybody in the community know they are not the people to cross because the whole bloodline will come get at you. And staying out of that mix of individuals like that should come second nature. But it's more common for people like that to play chess and move the pieces on the board. Everybody is expendable, even family members, friends, associates, and that's a dangerous group of people. On this episode of Hood Tales, we will be taking it to Gary, Indiana to discuss a family that felt like revenge, loyalty, and respect was worth sacrificing whoever. According to sources, back in 2015, 33-year-old Jerry Woods and 37-year-old David Johnson, the fourth, also nicknamed Pops, had a big blended family. Jerry had four kids entering a relationship. Pops had three of his own, and as the two started having children together, they had three more for a total of 10. The family was real tight and didn't use the term stepmom or dad at all. Everybody was just part of the family. Pops was said to be the type of man that demanded complete loyalty and respect from everyone in his circle and stood on principles and morals. Uh, his family being number one, and instill that in all his kids. If they got out of line or didn't listen, there was consequences. Jerry, his wife, also had to fall in line. The family was known to Gary as the ones not to play with. Not only was they super deep, but they also was known to get active. And one situation will prove how far they was willing to go. Allegedly, Jerry wanted to show her love and respect for Pops, who had been shot in the face 10 years earlier by a man named Alfred Wiley, leaving the man partially blind and Pops wanting to get back for years. Jerry found out that Alfred was back in the area after being out of town. With that information, Pops enlisted the help of one of his sons to slide on the man. At the time, 19-year-old David Johnson V, nicknamed Dooney, the young man already had been trained to go by his father and stepmother so when they put a blick in his hand and Pop said, let's ride, he did what he was told. On April 28th, 2015, the two went to Pop's old neighborhood, parked and waited to see if they saw his enemy. They were in the 5600 block of East 3rd Avenue, sitting in Jerry's van with a 38 revolver. When 46-year-old Alfred was spotted riding a bike, Pops allegedly grabbed the blick from his son. Once Alfred peeped the move, he tried to run, but he was caught in front of a house in the neighborhood and unfortunately shot in the head. He would not survive. As police got to the scene, no one said anything and the case would go still. Knowing that the hit would make the family hot, Pops decided to get rid of the burner and pulled up on an 18-year-old young man and family friend from the neighborhood named Arion Lackey and told Shorty to hold the gun for them and don't say anything to nobody. But that mistake would turn fatal. As the father and son returned home, Pops told Jerry that the business was handled and they talked with her telling him he made the right move. Everything seemed cool and they felt as though they got away with the hit. But about one month later, the family heard something they didn't like. That Ariane allegedly shot at another friend of the family and some street beef with the same blick they gave him the hold. The family felt betrayed and crossed. The streets was also claiming Arion was plotting to break into Pops and Jerry's house. 
The husband and wife felt as though something had to be done. The couple went and bought another blip and got family and friends to help them find Arion to try to get the 38 back. Jerry Pops, a family friend named Keontae Kaysen, who was 21 at the time, jumped in the family van. Right behind them was Dooney and another family friend, 26-year-old Michelle Hughes, that jumped in another whip as well to track down the young men. They ended up at a local hotel where Arion was at in the room with his little brother, 16-year-old Antonio Lackey. With two cars outside, Pops told the women to stay as him and the men went to the room. When they knocked on the door, Arion was surprised to see Pops. They were also surprised that his little brother was with him and he wasn't alone. They started questioning the young man about the 38 and also confronted him about shooting at a family friend. Arion stated he didn't have a gun anymore and he sold it. That made Pops heated because it was already a body on there. The young man said he could get it back, but by this time, the man snatched Arion and his little brother Antonio up and they all walked them outside to the car with no shoes on. The brothers tried to stay together, but they were both put in separate vehicles. They headed to the home of the man. Arion said he sold the blick too, but no one answered the door. After that, Jerry and Pops decided to drive the brothers to a wooded area called the farm in the 7,000 block of Grand Avenue in Hobart, Indiana. Allegedly, as they made the brothers get out the car, the others watched as Jerry and Keontae walked the two deeper into the woods. They told them both to kneel down and face each other and say their goodbyes before shots went off, hitting both the young men in their heads. As they got back to the vehicles, it was stated no one should ever cross the family. They all discussed that the people in the vehicles were the only ones who knew what happened and not say anything about the situation at all. As everyone made it home for a few days, things seemed normal until the Lackey brothers' family started sending out messages and asking people in the community how they saw them, including members of Pops and Jerry's family as well. But everybody played it cool. Three weeks later, some people were going fishing and discovered human remains in the trail. The brothers were identified by Teeth as Arion and Antonio Lackey. The family was notified with the news. They told police the last place the brothers were at was a hotel. The surveillance footage was pulled, showing them being led to the car. Pops and Jerry were identified from the video. As the investigation started, also other members as well. Three months after the hit, in the 700 block of North Henry Street in Gary, Indiana, at the family's home, Hobart Police, a few other agencies, and SWAT raided Jerry's and Pop's home about 5 a.m. David Johnson III, Pop's dad, was arrested, Pop's himself, and his son, Dooney. But Jerry, Keontae, and Michelle were not around. Michelle and Keontae were picked up first. Five months later, Jerry would be tracked down all the way in Dallas, Texas. All involved were charged with kidnapping and murder of the two brothers. Jerry and Pops were also charged with the hit on Alfred as well. As the case made its way to trial, almost all parties involved took a plea for their cooperation, getting lesser sentences of like 8 and 14 years. Even Jerry was ready to talk, but it wouldn't work. With all the evidence, she was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to 120 years in prison. Pops was found guilty of all charges as well and received a 190-year prison sentence. Rest in peace to Alfred, Antonio, and Arion. I send my prayers and condolences to all families affected by this situation. This was a crazy story of revenge and family loyalty. And for the little brother Antonio, he lost his life for something he wasn't even involved in. Guilty by association because of his big brother. It seemed like the family was on some mob type time. But you can't trust everybody you do dirt with. When them peoples get to throwing out their time, loyalty goes out the window. I'm going to leave the moral of the story up to y'all on this one. Remember, leave it in the comments, but definitely be respectful. And we got to succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale.
Man, y'all heard the story. I ain't going to talk y'all head off, man. Leave it in the comments about this one. Let me know what y'all think about the situation and what the moral of the story should be. Y'all already know it's all love, fam. This is another episode of Hood Tales. It's your boy Tony two times. I'm out.